Well, thank you, Mr. President. This is, this is a momentous time. Uh, you, Mr. President, uh, and uh, myself, and the senator from uh, District L are all a part of a pretty amazing class, in my estimation, from the 22nd State Legislature. We started serving on January 8th of 2001, and here we are uh, 16 years later. It just boggles the mind to realize all that has occurred since. I ask your permission, Mr. President, to read the 10 names of those uh, no members. And I would say that uh, what heard a remarkable thing is that there were 10 of us out of 40 on the other side. Uh, we were one quarter of the other side. And if we knew then what we know now, we would have run the place. <laughs> but we didn't. Maybe that's fortunate. We didn't know. And, but we have run the place since then, so I do appreciate that that, that has happened. <laughs> so those names alphabetically, Mr. President, are all elected at the same time. Mike Chenault, Harry Crawford, Hugh Budfate, Gretchen Guess, Ken Lancaster, Liesl McGuire, Kevin Meyer, Drew Scalzi, uh, Gary Stevens, and Peggy Wilson. And then, Mr. President, there were four. Only four of us left, the three of us and the Speaker of the House. There have been deaths, uh, which is one of the shocking things. Uh, my good friend and yours, uh, Drew Scalzi, uh, passed away. There have been retirements. And frankly, some of those 10 were simply not reelected uh, when they decided to run. This, Mr. President, was the best class ever, in, in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion. You might want to recall what was going on 16 years ago. It was a very meaningful time. Uh, shortly after we were elected, on September 11, hijackers took over control of four airliners. They crashed into the World Trade Center and uh, the Pentagon, and then the heroic story of um, the plane that was, had passenger resistance and, and then crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. 3,000 people uh, died, of course, in that. Another issue that happened at the same time, Wikipedia began. Can you imagine life without Wikipedia? <laughs> 16 years ago, the euro became the official currency of the European Union. Congress enacted No Child Left Behind. And we here in Alaska, uh, Mr. President, we face some very serious issues, a budget shortfall. Can you imagine that? Due to decline in North Slope oil production. In our first year, there were attempts, Mr. President, to reinstate an income tax. There were attempts to allow a portion of the permanent fund earnings to be appropriated. And here we are again, Mr. President. The only significant measure we passed at the time was an alcohol tax. We had big battles here over wastewater discharge from cruise ships. We created the Office of Victims' Rights. We made changes to the state's retirement system. Can you imagine all that happened in that first year? That was just the first of our 16 years together. So, Mr. President, this may take a while to get through all 16 years. <laughs> okay, I'll spare you. I won't, I'll, skip, I'll skip the next 15. But, Mr. President, we, in a very real sense, are a family. Um, we were together at that time, at the beginning, a four-month session, and then later a three-month session, and uh, sometimes five-month sessions as we went into special sessions. If you add up all the months we've served together, it's been about six years nonstop, six years together. There are shorter prison sentences for capital crimes, <laughs> Mr. President. I think of my time with uh, the senator, uh, of our time serving together, and of her son, Grayson, a um, remarkable young man. And uh, we knew him from when he first arrived on the scene as a tiny baby and uh, up until now. And I remember one instance, I, I, I was in my office on the first floor right across the, the hall from the senator's office, and there was an enormous racket outside, uh, people running up and down the hall screaming and hollering, and just all sorts of racket going on. I stepped out there and found that it was only Grayson who was in the hallway. <laughs> and uh, as a grandfather, I sort of uh, walked up to him and I said, uh, go to your room. And he hung his head and he walked into the senator's <laughs> office. So we've known him all this time and have loved that experience. I, I don't know how to say this next part, uh, so I'll just blurt it out, Mr. President. I've known and liked the senator's husbands throughout the last 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I like them better than she did. Uh, <laughs> And, and I truly apologize. I truly apologize for bringing up that issue. Still, Mr. President, we are a family. We are a family. 
with the ups and downs of a family, with the good times and the bad times. Have I mentioned the senator's wonderful sense of humor? Uh, I'll share just one example. Uh, many of us were at a council, a council of State Government West meeting. I think we were in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, around a big table, and the senator ordered a, a Chilean sea bass as for dinner. At a ride, it was beautiful, it was wonderful. And another state representative sitting at the table said, uh, you know, that's an endangered species. And without missing a beat, the senator said, well, someone has got to eat it. <laughs> and of course she's right, someone has to eat the last endangered species. <laughs> Let, let's talk briefly about the annual skits. Uh, I do want to comment on that because, you know, the senator lived such a, a, a big life, a full life, a dramatic life, no question about it, which means that she was often the target of the skits, uh, which meant that the rest of us were often ignored. Uh, the less colorful members were often ignored. And we'll miss her, Mr. President, for the comfort level she brought to all of us because she was the target so often. <laughs> a great leader, uh, particularly in the Arctic. Uh, I, I have to admit that I have to underline what she has done in the Arctic, not only here on the state level, but also on the national level. She has been our spokesperson, and she has done so much. And um, as, she, as she's always fond of saying, uh, the U.S. is only an Arctic nation because of us, and she has brought that attention to, uh, to our state. Uh, I honestly think her work is not done in that area, and uh, we can expect her to provide needed leadership in the future on the Arctic somehow, and in some way I know she will do that. Professionally here on the floor and in, in, this, in this chamber and, and in the committee meeting, she, she uh, was a wonderful chairman in judiciary, resources, rules, and then her years here on the floor as our Senate Majority Leader. Truly an outstanding orator. Um, I don't want to offend anyone by saying she's the best orator on the floor, but I, I think she is. She could always speak so wonderfully and beautifully and convincingly, and she always made us, the Senate, look better than we probably deserve. She's always more stylishly dressed, uh, always well put together. And, uh, and I often, often remember that I started listening to her, not particularly interested in, in the subject, but by the end of it, I was an advocate. I was inspired by what she had to say. The only contention we have ever had, Mr. President, uh, both of us were asked to be interviewed to be the chair of CSG West in 2001. After the interview, they announced that Representative McGuire would chair it. A friend of mine on the committee said, uh, really, she's young, she's attractive, she's well-dressed, she's well-spoken, and she smells good. <laughs> that was particularly hurtful to me. <laughs> uh, 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 so the committee member said, uh, did you really think we would choose a gray-haired professor? And, and, uh, and I guess I, I did not think that. I would have voted for her myself if I had a chance. And she did a wonderful job as a leader of CSG West, innovative, challenging, successful, really charting the future for that organization. I, I, I can't uh, end without talking about her father, uh, David McGuire, famous throughout Alaska. He worked on many knees here, Mr. President, including, I think, uh, yours. And uh, Dr. McGuire was truly world famous as a surgeon and as an inventor. He was always proud of his daughter. She may not have heard that praise. I'm not sure she always did. Uh, behind closed doors, maybe out of her hearing. I just hope she really knows how enormously proud he was of her. I believe he's looking down now with great pride in her accomplishments. What about the future? Well, we know we will lose her as a colleague, and we also know, I think, that she will go on to, to great things. When I leave, Mr. President, people will say, uh, well, it's about time. <laughs> uh, but when Senator McGuire leaves, people will say, What's next? I know it will make us proud, Senator. Thanks for the 16 years of friendship and adequacy and smart politics. You will always be a part of our family. Godspeed, Senator McGuire.